welcome to Flip It or Keep It. I am going to play Seamist. Are you ready? Here we go. I did it right! Yay! <laughs> it's hard sometimes when you played it a few times because a lot of the verses are the same with the different like variation on it. So um, sometimes you don't know, did I already play that set of C, C chord? Or did I already do the G's there? Did it, you know? Anyway, that's it on that. So um, tomorrow, I, I do all my buying now for Flip It or Keep It from Auction Ninja. It's where I got this beautiful keyboard. Very happy with it. And um, tomorrow I'm going to pick up four albums that I got. A couple of Wings, um, Paul McCartney, uh, where did I get? Um, Speed of Sound and London Town. And then I also got Ringo Star, Ringo Star, and I got um, uh, Electric Light Orchestra. Oli, Elo, Elo. I, <laughs> I think I used to have it on an eight track tape. I think all those songs are the same ones, but I'm not 100% sure. Anyway, it only cost me like $17 to get four of them. And they're all in very good to excellent condition. So I'm not reselling those. Um, usually when I resell, I resell the ones that are have not been um, opened yet because I don't want to open them and play them if they've already been sealed and collectors may want that and I'm not collecting them like that. So I don't mind selling those. I just sold one and it was to a guy who, um, he sells a lot of things and he had showed me a picture of somebody that sent him one and how, how it arrived at his house and it did not arrive there in very good condition. So it made me extra paranoid. <laughs> and I'm like, where do I put this in? I ended up wrapping it exactly how I would have wrapped it anyway, but I was trying other methods and I was like, oh no, I'm gonna ruin this. <laughs> he gave me a really good review though. He said, um, um, I, I think it's funny and I keep thinking about it a lot. He said, uh, uh, I couldn't be happier. <laughs> that made it worthwhile. But anyway, um, before I actually mailed that to him, I looked at the music on there and it was one song, and I can't think of what it was right now, it's a song I love. So had that not been sealed, that would be in my collection right now. Um, so that's about it. I'm going to um, Auction Ninja, getting most of my things. I don't do savers anymore. It's just not worth it. They want like $25 for something that has a scratch in it. I can't resell that. I mean, it's great 
you know, if you want to go in and pick up something for yourself. But I mean, it's still, it would still be cheaper than going on eBay and getting something, you know, obviously, but it's your gas, it's your money and you get there and, and it's just, eh, they're just charging too much now. They really are. But so are all the Goodwills along, you know, around. I, I follow a lot of YouTubers that go to Goodwill. I've actually stopped watching them. Kind of got sick of watching the the, the uh, Goodwill ones. The storage units are okay if if they don't go through every little box to see what's in the junk drawer or something like that. You know, push it aside, just get to the good stuff. We don't want to see all that crap. Go through that later. You know. Um, I love the yard sales. I love watching um, Kayla and her husband. I don't know if the husband is they're married or the boyfriend girlfriend. I don't remember now. I don't know, but I love them both. And one's the homeschool and um, pickers, I think. Uh, they're under two different names. Kayla, Kayla's Junk, I think, is what she's under on eBay. And um, I love watching them. I used to like watching Crazy Lamp Lady. For some reason, that's not coming right up. I have to go check her out again. I liked going to thrift stores with her. I think the reason I stopped watching was I got tired of the Goodwill stuff. Um, is you know, it's all gone through now. You know, like before they put things on the shelves and you just, you had a chance to get something valuable. Now it's, they think it's valuable and they don't know. They don't know any more than I know. They're even worse. They think something is worth a lot and they jack it up like it is. Or this is what real, oh, I hate this, okay. I hate it when I'm watching the yard sale ones and the people giving the yard sales say to the YouTubers who are selling. I looked that up on eBay and I know what it's worth and I know what it's going for. No, you don't. No, you don't. The people on eBay, all right, they can ask anything for that. And they might think it's worth a lot of money. I put something up there before I think it was worth $700 because I had just the answer tell me it was worth $700. And Etsy was on there saying it was worth that. And then I brought it to Kaminsky's and they told me it was worth 40 bucks. So, you know, people don't really know. What you need to do is go on eBay and then go to filter when you get on an actual product and look for sold and hit on sold and see what that item actually sold for. Make sure that's what you have because I bought somebody's turtle before and I believe them because they showed that somebody else said it was worth $250. But come to find out that person was wrong and I bought a turtle for $35. It's worth about that that I would have never bought. I bought it for 35, thinking I could sell it for 200. So there's that. Um, you have to be really careful out there. There's a lot of mimes and trips and everything. And I used to love going to Savers. I'd go like once a week and fill up my cart and spend 65, $85 a week on my credit card, which is why I can't use it anymore. And now I go in, I have the cart, but I'm walking out with a $5 candle and some socks for myself and that's it because I am not going to give all right say something is worth um, $35 on eBay say I can sell it for that okay and you're charging say 15 for it right you're not charging you're not having to pay the fees to eBay so if I put it up for 35 eBay always comes to me and says make the customer an offer. So now my 35 has to go down to like 29 to make it appealing to the customer. So I'm not getting that 35, I'm getting 29. And now the 29, since I don't do free shipping, you have to add the shipping and handling. So let's say it's another $7, is now $37, all right? eBay, even though they say they only take 12%, somehow turns out they take 40% of that. And now, I've got to pay for the packaging, the going back and forth to the post office, drop it off, anything that happens to that. And if I don't sell it, I'm sitting on it. I have to pay for the boxes, the bubble wrap, the thank you cards, the tape, <laughs> you know? So when you're at a yard sale and you say, oh, look, I saw that going for $35. It's not going for $35, all right? If I have it listed for $35, it's going for 27, maybe. Because every month I go down. So if I think if I want $35 for it, and I forget the shipping and handling, but if I want $35 for it, and I put it up for $35 a month later, 
I go down to 31, I have to stay lower than the other sellers. So there could be five other sellers there that want 50 bucks for it, all right? They're not gonna get 50 if I'm selling mine for 31, and I'm not gonna get 31 if somebody else is selling theirs for 25. And so if you're looking at the eBay seller who says they're getting 50 for it, they're not getting 50 for it. You have to look at the solds, all right? So if you want your money for it, then all I can say is try selling it on eBay yourself, you know, and see what happens. And good luck with that, especially if you're just starting out because nobody wants anything to do with you when you first start out. I didn't sell anything for like four to six months. I still don't really sell anything. I've sold 135 things. You know, people aren't rushing and banging on my door for anything because I'm not an experienced seller, even though I am. Boy, I wrap my, I wrap my stuff like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> I'm telling you, your item is going to get to your house with no problems when I wrap. Now you may get mad on the other end that it's wrapped too much, but I don't care, you're gonna get your item. And now and then if I have like, all right, I'll give an example. Like I bought a bunch of um, quilt books and a customer wanted a quilt book and I had an extra one that I can't really make $8 on. I could save it for my thrift store when I, when I open my th vintage booth in Virginia Beach in another year or two, year and a half, but I decided this customer likes this type of thing and they're ordering from me so I threw it in with that person's order and I got a really good review on that he's like so he even gave me something extra I was so happy and that makes me happy that I made her happy you know that's the important thing she may never come back and buy from me again who knows you know it all depends <laughs> but anyway I just sold a cabinet card um, I've sold a couple of those so I just get all my things from Auction Ninja and I try to pay as little as possible. And then I sell them for as, as low as I can. But like I said, if you see I have something there for $35, you don't wanna pay the $35, wait a month. That'll go down to 31, then it'll go down to 29, then it'll go down to, I go down like, like $3 whenever it's over 21, 26, 24. You know, and then eventually it will go out. So we hope. And if not, then eventually it's going to go to my vintage shop. We'll see. All right, well, that's it. Back to my music. Oh, oh and if you're watching me and you know that I'm a runner and I was trying for the, to do the 25K, I'm not going to be able to do it this year. I had ankle problems, knee problems. Um, had to stay off my leg completely. I'm hoping... To be able to go up this week my knee like just like just swelled up and I was using a cane um, but um, I mean it's gone down but it's still not 100% and that's it for now talk to you all later bye